Hey everybody, if you've been uh, following along with our Paddle Monster newsletter from week to week, you know that I usually do a short video to introduce the topics that we're going to share uh, articles about in that newsletter. And I want to change the format of my video a little bit this week, change things up, because I'd like to do a video that's a little longer where I talk to you about what to do at the end of the season and a little bit about off-season training. So for most of you, uh, your season is winding up. If you are a racer and aren't doing a major event like the ICF Worlds, your season's probably pretty well over. And even if you're doing something in the winter like the Gla Gla or something like that, uh, you really need to be starting a period of off-season training. And you do your, your training is focused on the 2025 season, but you'll, you'll arrange uh, some modifications to help you perform well at Glog, but it, it won't be one of your main events compared to some of the bigger events that are on the horizon in 2025. If you're somebody that lives in a cold climate and aren't uh, racing anymore and you just use stand-up paddling as a, as a form of exercise, you're probably done for the year. If you're somebody that uses stand-up paddling as a, as a little bit more seriously as a way to train your fitness and you live in a cold climate, you're probably getting close to the point where you're done for the year. And then, of course, if you're a racer and you've just finished uh, your major event for the year, something like Chattajack or something like that, then really you're done for the season and you should be thinking a little bit about the season that's just been and looking ahead to 2025. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about what do you do when the season's over? And I think that it's really important. It's now is a really important time to reflect on the year that you've just completed and think a little bit about what you did well what you improved upon, what your goals for this season were when the season started and whether you accomplished them or not. And if you accomplished your goals, what types of things did you do that allowed you to, to accomplish your goals? And if you didn't achieve all your goals, what do you think you could have done better? And uh, this is always a great learning opportunity because you want to try to find a way to identify things that you can improve upon and then develop a plan for the your training for the for the upcoming season to make sure that you do in fact improve upon those things and uh, you want to identify things that you did well so that you can repeat what you did that, uh, in your training that allowed you to do those things well and maybe even continue to develop those strengths so that they're even stronger so the first thing that you want to do is is reflect on the year that's been and do a, an audit on what went well what didn't go so well what are your strengths what are your weaknesses what are your goals for the 2025 season? And then you can start to think a little bit about the training that's going to get you to those goals. And so that's the big thing that I want to talk about in this video is off-season training. So we're a long way away from the 2025 season right now. Things usually start to heat up with the, the bulk of the racing starts to heat up kind of in May. And uh, here it is, it's the start of November in 2024, and we're looking at racing, big races starting in May 2025. So we've got a long time in front of us, seven months. And a good chunk of that period of time um, should be, uh, for a lot of people who are living in cold climates, is going to be largely off the water work. And I even believe that for people that do have the ability to paddle, live in warm climates and have the ability to paddle all year round, it's worth taking a chunk of time now, sort of uh, November, December, and maybe even into January a little bit, to focus a bit more on land-based work and a little bit less on water work. And so uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about that and explain why I believe that's true and uh, press upon you how valuable off-season training can be. So um of all about off-season training. So when I was uh, an athlete on the national canoe team, I discovered the importance of off-season training. I just immersed myself into uh, off-season training at the highest level I could possibly. And um, what I discovered is that uh, you could enter the off-season here. And if you did a really solid job with your off-season training, you could come out here. You'd improve in terms of your aerobic ability. You'd improve in terms of your strength. And you could improve in terms of your technique as well. Certainly, if you had the opportunity to paddle all winter, you would have opportunity to work and develop your on and develop your technique. But even if you didn't have the opportunity to paddle regularly, 
doing things like land drills, visualization, uh, so a lot of video and recognizing um, you maybe want to modify your technique. These things could allow you to um, to a point where very quickly when you got on the water in the spring, you could enhance your technique. So there's you know, important thing to realize about the off season is we're so far away from the next important races that it gives us a lot of flexibility in our training on things that we can do to get better. So consider, for example, if your goal is to improve your strength, right? If you're in the middle of the paddling season, it's hard to improve your strength because you don't want to be spending the amount of time in the gym required to do that. And you don't want to be putting the effort into your strength work that's required to really improve your strength because that's going to tire you out for your water workouts. And since you're in the middle of a racing season and races are imminent, nobody really wants to make that commitment to strength. Um, so they're racing. They're afraid it's going to compromise their racing. Yet really, if you wanted to develop strength, that's the type of commitment you need to make. And so um, if you don't have any races for a good period of time ahead of you. It allows you to really immerse yourself in a really thorough, comprehensive strength program that allows you to take your strength from here to here in a relatively short period of three or four months. Um, you consider um, aerobic work, it sort of works the same way. Now you might be saying, well, paddling is aerobic work and I paddle all summer, so aren't I developing my aerobic ability while I'm paddling? And the answer to that is yes, you are to some degree. But it's interesting that um, we're paddling, even if we're paddling really well and using our legs and our hips, our lower body a lot, which is what we should do, um, still not using our legs and our hips, our core, to the same degree that we do when we're doing a lot of land-based activities. Like consider your legs, which are the biggest muscles that we have. You know, think of our hamstrings and our quads. They're the biggest muscles that we could bring to bear in any exercise. And um, really don't use them to paddling to the same degree that we use them in a lot of land-based activities, like running, like cycling, uh, we do the rowing erg or something like that. And so because those muscles are so big compared to the smaller muscles that we use when we're paddling, um, place a bigger demand on our oxygen delivery systems, right? The bigger the muscle, the harder they're working, the more demand there is for oxygen. So uh, if your quads, or your hamstrings are working hard, they've got a lot of uh, demand for oxygen than if your biceps, for example, are working hard because the biceps are a much smaller muscle. So that greater demand for oxygen, it places a greater load on our oxygen delivery systems. And that means that we were doing a lot of land-based training, like running, like cycling, uh, for example, where we're using um, muscles than we, or more mu muscle mass than we use when we're paddling. We're more effectively training our oxygen delivery systems, okay? That's really what we're trying to do when we're doing our aerobic training. So doing land-based work for a chunk of time, shifting the focus away a little bit from paddling and focusing a little bit more on land-based work really can make a difference in your ability to improve your aerobic fitness. And your aerobic fitness is one of the main pillars of performance in stand-up paddling. Now, that doesn't mean that you continue to do that all through the season, because at some point you need to be on the water as much as you can, like times five times, six times a week, or some people are on the water even more than that. And um, you need to develop all this paddle-specific fitness um, you need for high-level racing, and you need to develop your technique as well. Um, at this time of year, when the races are so far away, it's a great opportunity to do land-based aerobic work and really you know, your, your uh, aerobic systems more in land-based work than you ever possibly could uh, on the water. And so you get a great benefit from it. Similarly, with strength work, um, you are doing a lot of paddling. You're doing trying to improve your strength. You're kind of pulling your body in two different directions. You, you do your paddling and your muscles and your nervous system get fatigued from the hard pulling you're doing on the water. And so when you go into the gym, you can't load your muscles to the same degree because A, they're fatigued, and B, the nervous system that controls those muscles and recruits fibers in, in con the contractions that you use when you're lifting, it's fatigued too. And so you can't ever load or stress your muscles to the same degree that you can when you're doing less paddling. 
And this is why the off season is the ideal time to uh, work on your strength. And strength is the second big pillar of performance in paddling, in especially stand-up paddling. Um, two reasons that strength is uh, for stand-up paddling. The first is that the boards are pretty fat. Even the skinniest um, is a lot fatter and less uh, in the water than a racing canoe like I paddled in, one, in my canoe career. Um, so you need a little bit more strength. The second reason you need more strength than a stand-up paddleboard is because you're standing up, your hand, your bottom hand is a long way from, from the blade of the paddle, much farther distance than it would be if you were kneeling down in a canoe. And that means that it requires more strength because you don't have the leverage to work uh, as well against the water in your blade that you would if your hand was closer to the blade. And so again, you need to be stronger. Um, as I was saying, off season when you aren't paddling as much is the time to work on your strength and you can make great gains on your strength in the off season that you can't possibly do if you're on the water five, six times a week in the summer, or even if you're on the water four times a week and pulling hard. So it's imperative if you want to address that pillar of performance that you focus a little bit more on land-based work and maybe do a little less paddling in the off season for three months. You know, again, November, January, maybe even uh, November, December, and maybe part of January. Um, then of course, the third pillar of performance in paddling is technique. And if you're lucky enough to paddle in the off season, this gives you an amazing opportunity to work on technique because you can totally break down your stroke without fear of having to be ready to race in the week or the week after or a month from, from now. You've got time. So if you look at your technique and you identify that you've got issues with your technique, things that you want to improve on, um, you can very easily um, to doing you know, work on your technique without worrying about how fast you're going. And truthfully, the best way to, to you know, work on your technique once you identify that there's an issue and to change it is to be very deliberate about how you're paddling so that you maximize the number of strokes where you're doing what you want to do with your change in technique and minimizing the number of strokes that, that don't represent what you want your technique to become. And so I um, strongly suggest that the off season is a time that you can use to grade it uh, uh, from a technique perspective. And even if you're not able to paddle much, um, a lot of years when I was a sprint canoe paddler, I couldn't paddle during the winter because our river was frozen and the canoes were unsafe to go to take out in the bigger water on the lake. And so I would do uh, a lot of land drills where I was putting my body into the right positions um, times a day ingraining the positions that I wanted to achieve on the water in my nervous system's memory so that when I got on the water in the spring, I could find those positions really easily. And the truth of the matter is if you can find, you know, positions in the stroke, sort of the catch, um, middle of the pole and the exit, then your body, and you can do them really well, then your body's intelligent enough to connect the dots between those positions. And very quickly, you're going to have, you know, solid technique. So, the off season is critical for addressing all three of those major pillars of performance in paddle sports. And a lot of people, I think, you know, re think that when the weather gets cold, the days get shorter, um, not paddling as much, it's a long way till the next race, that the season's kind of over and they can hibernate for the winter and they can start thinking about serious training again the following spring. And I just want to impress upon you that really now is the time where you can make a big jump, where you can make a big jump in your fitness, where you can make a big jump in your strength, where you can make a big jump in your technique. Um, on your know, own personal standards, you can be here entering the off season in those three areas, and you can be here when you start paddling in the spring, just based on you know, own yourself against you. But you can also make a really big jump against the people that you compete against because uh, they don't do a solid off season of training and you pull away from them. And this is also something that I saw and experienced as an athlete in canoe. And I have to tell you that I've seen it so many times, both uh, with myself, I've seen other athletes do it in canoe, um, seen both athletes who were my teammates and athletes I competed against, um, I've seen it as a coach in canoe, and I've seen it as a coach in stand-up paddling that the people who put the time in, good quality time in in the winter, are the ones that really take off the following spring. 
So I kind of get everyone excited about the prospects of training in the off season. If you live in a cold climate like I do, there's lots of really productive stuff that you can do with your training. And if you're fortunate enough to live in a nicer climate where you uh, have nice weather all year, I'm jealous. Um, I, I also think that you can use the fact that you can paddle all year to your advantage, but I think you'd be wise to also focus a little bit more, at least for a couple of months, on some land-based work because there's a lot to be gained from that. So um, leave it at that in this newsletter. I think I'd like to talk in a little bit more detail about what an off-season program looks like. Um, that you can maybe use that information to build your own off-season program or if what I'm telling you uh, is to um, something that makes sense to you and um, seems that you think that what I'm suggesting would be helpful, um, maybe you want to consider doing your off-season training with us, with Paddle Monster. Um, would be thrilled to work with any of you uh, to help you, to guide you through this process, to give you the type of work that in the winter that's going to make the most sense, um, get you where you really want to be for the next spring. Um, athletes that have done it with us before, I think, can tell you what a difference it makes. And so uh, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, you know, program, what the program looks like, how you periodize it, um, and um, and I'll share a little bit of information about, you know, I organized the program um, and uh, hopes that, you know, you're going to consider um with us over the winter but um, no matter what you do whether you train with it with me whether you train with another coach um, whether you build your own program off-season training is critical so you know hang things up and uh, think that your your paddling oriented activity is finished until next spring there is a ton of stuff that you can do now and through the winter to be pr better prepared for the paddling season next spring all right uh, have a great week and I uh, look forward to uh, talking to you more about off-season training next week.